Hi, this is Katrina Sargent, owner and creator of Devil Doll Custom Creations. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how I get my storyboards or snow globe tumblers to not have that giant air bubble on the top once you fill it up. So I use hog outfitters storyboards this is a 20 ounce storyboard this is how it look when you get it out of the box you're gonna have to now take it apart the bottom unscrews and then the plastic comes off i get rid of the paper put the plastic off to the side with the lid because you're not going to need it until way later i'm then going to tape off the top stainless steel and then the bottom threads you do not want any paint or epoxy to get on these threads. That is what threads into your bottom. Next, you're gonna to need to get those two pieces apart, the stainless steel and the plastic. Pop it in your freezer for about 30 minutes or so, and when you tap it on the counter, it will come apart. So here I've just painted it white, and now I'm going to glitter it using the epoxy method and then do two additional coats of epoxy until smooth. You do not want your coats su super thick. If your coats are too thick, your glitter won't shift properly. Be careful on the bottom not to get too thick as well. You're gonna want your bottom to click in fully. Now I'm gonna show you how I layer three different pieces of vinyl with using the hinge method. I personally like contact paper. You can use whatever transfer paper you like. Cut it bigger than your largest sheet. You're gonna to need to work from the top layer down to the bottom layer. I have this light board that helps me line up each layer. It's, you don't have to have it, but it is nice. So then what I do is I take my contact paper and I set it on the back end. It has to be on the wax side, not the other side, it will stick to it. And then you're gonna lay your next layer down. Make sure you don't have any of the paper lifting. Line it up and then you're going to do a hinge method down onto the next layer. I did not do that correctly, so I just cut another piece and added it to it. That works 100%. And then you're just gonna remove that from the backing sheet as well. Make sure it's pressed down well and do roll your sheet off instead of just pulling at it. That's gonna help keep everything stuck to where it belongs. Put it back on that wax side of the contact paper with a little bit hanging up off the top for you to do your hinge method. Then you're gonna lay your very last layer, which is usually your biggest layer. Again, make sure it is laying flat. So I always have little pieces of contact paper around my area so I can use them to lay it flat. Once it is completely flat, you're then going to layer your contact paper on top of it, line it up correctly before you press down on that top little area you left to hang over. Once I'm happy with how everything's lining up, I then cut around my decal as close as I can get, and then I cut into it and make little divots so you can Angle your words a little better. I do it section at a time. You just have a little bit more control that way. Once you have that, you're gonna lay that top section, press from the middle out, and then you kind of hinge it up to get the next piece of contact paper off, and then lay it like that. Just make sure everything has good contact before you remove your transfer sheet. Sometimes metallic vinyls can get fingerprints on it. I take a little bit of alcohol 
and kind of dab it on the metallic vinyl just to remove any imperfections that have came. And then I do quick coat on the entire tumbler before I epoxy. So I'm gonna tape off the top and then tape off the bottom threads again before I move on to the next step, which is epoxy after the quick coat fully dried. You don't want a too thick of a coat, but you don't want any piece of your vinyl sticking up. Epoxy like you would normally would. Once you've popped your micro bubbles, you're then going to remove your tape after it turned for about an hour. It depends on the epoxy, how soon you remove your tape. I clean up all of my edges with a baby wipe just to make it a little easier later. And once that's cured a little bit, you're gonna to wanna to take a craft knife and clean out any extra epoxy or anything that has got inside that little well area. If you don't, your plastic piece will not fit correctly inside of that. And once you have that fully cleaned out, you're going to then add a little bit of epoxy into that well. You can use stainless steel stir, you can use silicone brush, you can use a syringe, really anything you want. You're just trying to get the epoxy inside that little divot so that when you add your plastic covering, it will epoxy to itself and you won't have any leaking. I personally just like using my stir stick and kind of letting gravity take it into that little well. You don't want that little well to be 100% full because if you do and you add that plastic piece, there's gonna be a lot of spillover, but you want it over half full. Once you're happy with how much is in there, you're gonna take a baby wipe and clean up any extra you have along the silver around your tumbler before you add your plastic piece into the epoxy. It takes a little bit of muscle to get that plastic piece to click into your well area. Once you have it clicked in, I then add a weight to it for about 24 hours just to make sure it stays tight against it. It has to fully cure at least three days before you add the liquid. You remember that lid we put in the freezer? Here it is. Took it out of the freezer, tapped it on the counter, and it pops apart. You're gonna see a small little hole inside the plastic piece. So what you're gonna end up doing is you're going to epoxy inside the threads and thread it onto the tumbler and let that cure. And then you're going to fill the rest of it up with a blunt syringe. I will link everything in the descriptions. So now that my epoxy has fully cured for three to five days, I'm gonna move on to my liquid step. I mix vegetable glycerin and water to make my liquid. These are little lemon glitters from Feather Bear Bling and a little bit of halo glitter dots from Mr. Nola's glitter. I add them to a little bit of my glycerin mix. It gets it the glitter fully coated and it doesn't make it all sticky. So how to make the glycerin water mixture is it's just half and half, half glycerin, half water. You're going to see it cloudy. Stir it up. You keep stirring, the cloudiness will go away. That means it's fully mixed. You don't have to worry about micro bubbles or like that with the epoxy. Just keep stirring until it's clear. Then you're gonna keep adding that liquid mix to your storyboard until it's almost full. I stop about an inch lower than the lip. And then once that's done, I take a baby wipe with a little bit of alcohol on it and clean up my threads fully. If you have any glycerin on it, sometimes the epoxy won't stick as well. So I just 
make sure everything's clean before I move on to epoxy. I'm gonna add epoxy inside the threads, inside the plastic piece, and then along the edges also. When you twist it on, you're gonna hear a click. Keep twisting until you hear a click. Clean up anything that spilled over. And now that epoxy has to cure before you add the rest of the liquid to get rid of that air bubble. Here is my blunted syringes. It fits perfectly into that hole. I had a little bit extra left in my glitter. You're not gonna be adding glitter, you're just adding liquid. Then you put the syringe in the hole, add the liquid, and so you're completely filled up. It's gonna take a lot more than you expect. So what I do is I kinda keep tapping it, keep trying to get the air to the highest point of the tumbler, and that is where I'm going to be adding the liquid. So you're gonna have a little bit of air coming up out of that hole as you're adding liquid, that's normal. You're trying to get that air out. And I like to plug the hole with my finger and kind of see what it looks like, the glitter moving. Some people like a little air bubble to get your glitter moving. I personally don't, but that is my personal preference. You do what you like. I put enough liquid into it until it's basically spewing back out. Then I clean it back up before I move on to the next step. I plug that hole up with UV resin. You do not have to, but if you do not plug that hole up, your liquid is going to go into the place between the plastic and the metal and it will create a bigger air bubble than what you had. So what I do is I put a little bit of UV resin on it, smear it around, let it go 30 seconds with my light, remove the extra before it fully cures, and then do two full minutes on the hole and then add another section and let it cure two full minutes. You could use facet epoxy. You can do the entire part of the plastic if you would like. This is just trying to prevent liquid coming from the plastic to the stainless steel section of the lid. Since this has been upside down so long, sometimes the glitter sticks. You can just shake it up. Here is all those little cute lemons. They are heavier, so they do fall a lot faster than my other glitters, but it's worth it. The reason why I like glycerin mix better than baby oil or contact solution, mineral oil, is the glitters don't move as fast since the glycerin's a little thicker. The lemons move faster because it is heavier, but I like how they kind of just float and kind of seem weightless. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe how adorable that turned out. So once you're completely happy with this so far, you're gonna then add the metal piece back onto your plastic piece. I use epoxy. You're going to then add it to all of the edges, any place it touches that plastic lid, you're gonna to wanna to add it to. You're gonna to wanna to put it down straight and you're gonna to have to use your muscles until it clicks on. Clean up any spillage it has and then I add my weight again for a while until it's fully cured. Here it is finished. It is gorgeous. You can also do a full layer of epoxy over the entire thing if you would like. 
it is your call but this shouldn't leak if you've added enough epoxy and you've let the epoxy cure between the steps like you should i hope you loved this tutorial please like share subscribe have any questions write them in the comments i will get back to you you also can find me on facebook.com slash devil doll community i have my own group page that you can join find like-minded friends ask me questions show your work off <laughs>